Yo, 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 what is good, people? I am Jace, this is Kenny, and we are Dadcast. With the man, them. I think the delay is going to kill us this time around, Kenny. We are still in our own homes, um, but we are due to be joined mm-hmm. by a guest from across the pond. We are waiting for him to, to jump in when he can. He's all the way in Philadelphia, so yeah, I'm sure he'll get here once he's sorted out the technical issues that he's having. Kenny, how have you been over the last week, sir? I've been all right, you know, I've been all right. Uh, a few, um, you know, different conversations um, been happening over the last week. Um, which has been very interesting. Um, been speaking to a lot of people about wanting to educate themselves around, you know, um, what we as Black people go through. Um, so yeah, it's been been very very interesting indeed. What about yourself? So time of the recording. Um, this is just the day after the Black Lives Matter protests that took place um, in Bristol. Uh, it's been taking place up and down the country. So yeah, I was I was a part of that. My first time being a part of a protest. I, you know, me and you were in the same boat of concerns around our health um, and things when it came to the protest. And I was very much, I'm not going, I'm not going, I'm not going. But then I didn't even know what time it was. I was basically ready for bed and I was like, do you know what? Normally when I say no to something, I stick with it. But it was just still like in the back of my mind. So I was like, oh, do you know, I will go. Um, I went, was on College Green for a bit. Couldn't really hear the speech, it was a bit of a shame done the march and then I went home um I didn't stick around at um Castle Park mm-hmm. because I didn't want to be there for longer than, than I needed to but I wanted to kind of be be a part of stuff and it was just really nice the kind of unity and just the energy of the space and everybody just being absolutely blessed because with these things there's always a chance that there will be somebody or there can be somebody that will cause an issue um on my social media I've shared quite a few things around the the falling of the statue um, of Edward Colston, and I've had I haven't had any conversations with anybody social media wise disagreeing, and I think part of that is with the likes of Facebook, I haven't had any of them situations where somebody said something and I've gone, or like that's even been on a different page to what I've been on. Um, I know that you've had that a bit, um, Nicholas had that a bit, but I've not not really got into it with anyone i've kind of shared my two cents and i think the thing that's been difficult is i don't want to be scrolling through twitter looking for someone to argue with but i put a post up today because i haven't had a debate with anyone because no one's come up for me to debate with and i don't want to go out looking for random people because i just feel like it's almost like inciting an argument i don't need to do that um so yeah kind of been sorting those bits out but it's been good the conversation we've had um even the conversations with the girls are making them more aware of the situation of what's going on if it wasn't for for you know the, the virus and stuff the girls would have been down there at the protest we would have been down there as a family so mm-hmm. it's good Same that, that they here. recognize it and know what is going on uh mm-hmm. we were going to do our poetry this week but we're going to wait a week um so as people will know uh, joe's had a family bereavement so they're dealing with that today um a lot of stuff's going on with that and so we said to joe don't worry about being on like you know do do your stuff with your family um all of you guys understand and obviously we both understand so yeah shout out to duppy thoughts with you uh skins i put up a post mm. about something i saw on the subreddit um for called i think it's called like dad it and it was a conversation from a dad and we spoke about it before about the lack of changing facilities in male restrooms and i cannot figure out why there aren't changing facilities in a male restroom Mm, yeah it's a it's a it's a, i think it's a a very stereotypical like um view on certain things like that which has kind of prompted it to be how it how it is but um i think there are some you know employers and some organizations that are ahead of the curve who has you know kind of inputted um some form of change in in male facilities uh, um i'm sorry in um in facilities for males and um you know, but it need, there definitely needs to be more. I know I've been in a situation, you know, um, when the kids were young, where I've wanted to change them, and you know, you can't go into the to the ladies, um, and um, you know, you have um, some places don't have a family changing, you know, changing room, um, and sometimes you might have to use the disabled, um, you know, the accessible toilets, um, and there should be some form of changing facilities for males in the male toilets, um, and. You know, 
it, it comes across loads of different things. You come across anxiety, you come across embarrassment, you come across, you know, things that you shouldn't be feeling as a parent and as a father. And also you get certain looks and, you know, and things from people when you shouldn't really be, you know. I know Joe mentioned um, a few times on the show about, you know, him being, you know, white and having uh, dual heritage children and people looking at him a, a, a way when, you know, he's, you know, um, walking with his kids and, you know, whether one of them needs to go to the toilet and he's waiting for them. And, you know, it's, 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 it's an issue which needs to be, you know, resolved. I mean, have you, have you been in that situation before? I can't remember if you spoke. So, yeah, I, when the, so I haven't been in that situation with regards to needing the changing facilities, but before the girls were old enough that I felt confident to let them go to the toilet by themselves um, and wait outside, um, we would go into the accessible toilet, which, you know, there's that side of me where it's a bit like, oh, you know, I feel really bad if somebody should need to use this um, restroom and I'm in it. But thankfully, when we were using it, there there wasn't ever a time where somebody was waiting outside and there was an issue like that. Um, so with the thing that I did, sh- with, uh, with the post that I did share on, on the Instagram and on Facebook, um, essentially what's happened is dad said that there's no change of station in the men's room. Um, girlfriend had a dentist appointment, no other clean tables to do it. So went ahead and entered the women's restroom. Whenever somebody opened the door to come in, um, he would always shout out hi to, to make it very clear that he is in that space so that any women that came in were already aware there was a man in there. He said there was one lady that kind of heard his voice and then walked back out confused that she got the wrong restroom um, and then, yeah, realised, no, it wasn't. Um, and then when she came in, it was no issue for her. she seen there was a baby and she was happy with it and just said how cute the baby was and went about her business. But then there was another lady who kind of gave him a side eye even though he was like, you know, as he was leaving with the baby. Um, and yeah, it's just a thing where people have said that there, there are these issues kind of going around and, and they're confused. Um, one person, Rich Collins, uh, once wrote a thank you email to the National Trust for putting change of facilities in some of their properties. Otherwise, he's used to finding spare corners to change nappies or he's even perfected, I think we shared a picture of it a while back, um, of the, the dad in like the knee crouch position and having to change the baby over his knees. And it just, yeah, it just baffles me because it's such a simple, such a simple, simple thing. And and I tried to go out and think of, okay, what could be the reasons for not doing it? But then any of the reasons that I could think of, why would that be different from men to women? Why can it be in one set of toilets but not in the other? Which is, yeah, a big question. I think it, it seems really minor, but I do think it's something that does need a need change because it it will make people like single fathers just feel just dis dis counted not thought of let alone us dads that might have mm. the kids like a father that had that does not have uh, a mother in his child's life that is able to take them to the correct toilet it, you know when you're in a parent it's not too bad oh yeah take them in with you but actually what about those people that don't have that option they just become yeah and i think it just seems like a small thing in the grand scheme of things going on at the moment but actually for a lot of people it's a massive issue yeah yeah definitely definitely especially with people who suffer from anxiety you know anxiety um you could imagine you know, that knowing that that could be a trigger and it can happen at, you know, any moment for your child needs to go to the toilet. And, you know, it's, yeah, you know how parents can get anxiety sometimes where your children may be, you know, misbehaving in the store and, you you know, you're disciplining your children <laughs> and, and people around, you know, it's that kind of, it's that kind of feeling, but, you know, probably ramped up even more. Um, so it's, yeah, it, it's definitely, I think it's definitely a bigger issue than people you know, um, are led to led to believe. Um, mm. I just want to say, um, you know, we're meant to be joined by one of my boys um, from across the pond, um, Fame Black he's from Philadelphia. Um, he is uh, a father who has um, one child and he's expecting another. Um, so he is currently in Philadelphia experiencing um, a storm. Um, this is their third storm in the last couple of days. Um, and hence why he's having technical issues at the moment. So rest assured, if he is not on today, he will be joining us um, next week, hopefully where there's no storms in sight. So uh, just letting people know that, you know, if he can't get on today, we will get him on um, next week. And I also give him the task of writing a poem. Knowing fame, he will write one. So we'll get him to do that as well. Looking forward to that. Um, Kenny, we've, we've had conversations previously um, around dealing with behaviour and discipline, which you just mentioned a moment ago, kind of being caught in those situations in, in shops and stuff. Giving you a second now to reflect on how things have been to how they are now, how, in what ways has your approach changed to dealing with your children's behaviour? Uh, I, uh, 
I mean, it's a funny one because, you know, like I, I feel that the kids, they, they have, um, you know, enough respect and understanding to know that when we're out, you know, you conduct yourself in a certain way. They're older now, so um, it's it's not as as bad as it may have used. You know, it may have been you know in the past, but um, I normally just have to, you know, kind of just give them a look and and that's it. You know, um, just give them the eyes or just say like, you know, say half a word. You know what I mean? Like, mm. you don't even have to say what you're doing. Just be like, what? You know what I mean? And they and they kind of know. But um, I haven't had to deal. I haven't had to deal with that. Um, meltdown for a while um and what i would you know normally do is just you know take them to the side and just explain to them look you know it, this isn't the time and the place for you to be acting up like this this is this is this is wrong and when you get back you know what i mean like <laughs> you're gonna be disappointed because when you get back like you know what i mean you need to understand that what you did was wrong <laughs> that you um, got the receipts there's a long list of receipts yeah, of everything exactly, you've done we were out yeah actually, Tell a lie. Tell a lie. Tell a lie. So there was a situation two weeks ago where we went to um, the park, and um, Zaya didn't want to go to the park, um, and it's all stemmed around food because obviously that's Zaya. Zaya. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, we got to the park. He didn't want to go, and he was acting up, um, and he was just kind of moping around. And um, you know, Shara was trying to get him out of his funk, and then she was like playing with him, like trying to tickle him and stuff, and he screamed. And that, you know, that hurt her because it's like, why are you, why are you screaming? Like, you know what I mean? Like, why are you, why are you screaming? Um, for people to look at, you know, look like something's happening that shouldn't be happening. You know what I mean? Mm. And, um, you know, that hurt, that hurt her. And he needed to know that that hurt and he shouldn't be carrying on like that. No matter whether you're in a mood because of something you should not be in a mood about. Um, and he got stern talking to when we got back. Um, and yeah, he, he had to go in his room and to be apologized because you just see it's interesting you know, having one... to teach kids that, isn't it? Is okay. having to teach them, okay, you may have done that for a reason, but the reason you're given isn't a reason to do that, you know? It's, it's like the child that slaps, why did you slap? Oh, I wanted that toy back. You don't slap to get the toy back, like, there's no need to shriek over things. I was thinking to myself a bit earlier about how, like, I don't know the last time I had to count down. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because when, they, when they're really young, you, you're counting down all the time. Like, a lot of us have done the countdown and, yeah, it kind of resolves a lot of issues. But now the girls are at an age where they're... T- today I've used the word Marty a few times. Like, we've, we're starting to get the the huffs and stuff. And it's just, <laughs> Marty! <laughs> and... You know, it's just a silly bit. So the girls were watching something, uh, like some Barbie thing, and me and Nicola were like, we don't want to watch this Barbie thing. Uh, and I started singing a song at them, and they didn't remember the song. It was from uh, Curious George. So I put this song on Spotify. And then we listened to that song, but then, like, Jess is, like, sulking. And she goes, oh, I'm going to go watch it upstairs then. And then Jade's like, oh, but I won't listen to the song. And Jess's like, oh, well, I'm going to listen to it without you. I'm going to watch the program without you then. She goes out of the room. And Jay's like, what? And Nicola's like, no, 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 don't worry, Jada, she's not going to watch it without you. But five seconds later, Jess just storms back in the room, grabs a blanket, sits in the middle of the floor with a blanket over her head. And it's like, what is she doing? Like, why is this, why is this a thing? Um, mm. And then, yeah, and then we all had a bit of a, a song and a dance, and it was having fun. But there's been a few times where, yeah, like, they'll, they'll huff or they'll just have a proper cob on. Um, and, like, I shouted at Jess to fix her face. I think it was yesterday. And it's like, what's wrong with you? She's like, nothing. So like, fix your face then. Like, what are you doing? And she's still huffing. So I'm like, fix your face. And then like, her face went from like, down to normal. And yeah, I just feel, she, she's just going through the motions at the moment, is our Jess. And so is Jada, to be fair. But I don't know. How do, they, um, how do they take to discipline? Because I imagine that children, you know, because they're obviously they're two different children, they take to discipline very differently, as in their reactions to when they get cussed or, get, you know, get told off. So... I know that Jess wants to scream and like storm out and she'll do the storm out bit and that's that's okay, like that's controlled, cool. Um, Jade is a bit more of a crier. So when Jada feels, she feels like times ten. So if she's if she realizes she's upset you, then she gets really upset because she's realized how she's made you feel. And I think that level of disappointment also gets to Jada quite a bit. 
Um, and that's why when she's excited, when she's getting all excitable, is because she's feeling excited times ten. Yeah. And yeah, that's why it can be yeah, quite hard to to deal with sometimes with her doing those bits. Um, but yeah, I think that obviously <laughs> they've been my kids their whole life, so I think they kind of <laughs> understand where I am with things. Jada still struggles sometimes with the stop and don't. Um, they've been play fighting a lot, uh, and particularly since lockdown. A lot of rough and tumble between the two of them, which surprises me. So we, <laughs> so today. <laughs> We were telling them, so we listened to the music, and it's like, right, and it was playing chilled like Jack Johnson. Do you know what I mean? Like, free is the magic number, reduce, reuse, <laughs> yeah. recycle, them kind of tracks, like chilled stuff. And they're like wrestling, rumbling, tumbling on the sofa. And Nicholas like, right, stop, girls, stop, stop, stop. They wouldn't stop. So, like, right, you two aren't allowed to even make any physical contact with each other, otherwise you lose fifty p from your pocket money. And Jada's all doing the like, oh. Kind of test it. <laughs> yeah. Next thing, she's made contact with Jess, loses fifty p. Sulks. Do you know what I mean? It's like them, them sort of ones. And you know, Jada knows that if we if we're gonna do something, like we see it through. Um, mm. But they were still like testing the barrier, and but it's just such a and then that it's just that thing where like you know me and Nick look at each other like why is it that like we're happy for the kids to sit there and like you know so they're doing pat cake whatever it's fine but like we said to them stop play fighting. Stop play fighting. Because all that happens inevitably, with every play fight, unless it's checked by the parent, what happens, Ken? End up in tears. Always. <laughs> my my favourite line used to be, I'll finish in tears and they won't be mine. Like, it's just always the same. Like, <laughs> and, and yeah, so then they got into a bit of a huff about that. But then, yeah, they got over it. And then me and Jada were having, like, a dance. Um, yeah, we made a little video. <laughs> Jada was doing, like, cartwheels and handstands. Jess was doing in handstands. Then Jada wanted to cartwheel over Jess, and Jess was like, "Nah, nah, nah, you can't do it, you can't do it." So I led down, and Jada cartwheeled over me. I'll tell you that video later. Jada went more post on the internet. I respect Jada's wishes, but yeah, I'll have to show you the the, the stunt from Team Clarko. Um, who knows? In in ten years' time, she might look back and be like, "Oh, it's okay, you can share it now." So yeah, we'll see what happens in the time capsule. Oh, it's my man. Yeah, my my two are also play fine at the moment. Um, and you know you have you have to interject at a certain point because you know it's going to go left you know you let it happen for a bit because it builds resilience and stuff but then <laughs> it just you know it's going to get to a point um you know zaire when he's play fighting akita's rough like and zaire he likes it when she's rough there when they're playing together and stuff. Mm. um but zaire is sensitive as well so the difference between play fighting and you know kita being mean like okay. he doesn't like when people are like me like it's he it's hard to watch sometimes because you can see that he's now gonna start crying you know he's gonna tear up because it's just not nice how he's feeling about the person like being mean or saying something or whatever so um but yeah that's kind of what they've been going through man just lockdown rules is just different out here do you do you ever because what i'm really bad for is sometimes i end up getting in the mix do you ever get that when like the kids are having a proper laugh right and it's like do you know what, you two fight each other, like, let me jump in because then you as the dad become the target for a bit. And yeah, yeah I know sometimes it gets on, on Nicola's nerves, depending on the time. Because if it's like 7.30 in the evening, she's like, why are you doing this now? Like, it's bedtime, why are you doing this now? But then, yeah, I've got a lot better at, at picking my times. But sometimes, yeah, it's <laughs> as much as I say to the kids, it's, it's known as well that there's like, it's like knowing when to finish something. So it's not saying to the kids, like, you guys aren't allowed to rough and tumble. Because like you say, they need to kind of have it in that physical play, gets off a bit of energy. We're not taking our kids, that our kids aren't out as much as they usually would be doing as much as they usually would be uh, prior to all this. But yeah, it's just mm. like, sometimes you've got to let them sort of blow off steam, but then let them know that there's a point where you have to stop. Because it gets to that line, and then people get mm. bust up. One thing, one thing I've kind of, kind of taken from you know lockdown and you know lockdown rules in terms of the kids is, um, I've started to realize that I am nitpicking a lot and I need to kind of you know um, nip that in the bud a bit in terms of like every minute being like stop this or stop that or you know just kind of just let them be. Mm. You know, almost like this conversation we had about homeschool, you know, and where I was like, okay, nine till three, they're gonna do this and da da da, and now I'm a lot more relaxed and it's you know 
we do it from you know half nine till 12 and that's it and then they just go and do what they're doing and it's a lot more relaxed oh here's a, a, a list of stuff you can pick what one you want to do yeah. and then you know and and that's it and it's less frustrating for me it's less frustrating for them i'm further at the moment so i can spend quality time focused on that with them and it's it's a lot better but i know i am starting to nitpick and get them frustrated because i'm frustrating myself and i need to kind of take myself out of that, that situation and just let them just let them be you know my mum always says that you know you need to pick and choose your battles because when it's time for the proper cussing when they need it you would have just outcussed them too much already that it's just not going to mean anything yeah and that's um, and that i guess kind of links into a point i made a little well way back when we were talking about people like striking their kids i am a person who i haven't had to strike the girls Nicola's uh, against it, but there are some people that because they do that for every little thing, where do you go when there's a real extreme behaviour? Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, you know, my child comes back, find out they stab somebody on some stupidness. Like, I don't know how I would react, but I feel like that would be a reaction mm. that I might go, oh, like, you're not even thinking about it. But if you've already been doing this, oh, do the dishes, you ain't done the dishes. Or you ain't done this. Yeah, yeah. Or you ain't put your shoes away. Like, it's... It's interesting though because there's this I don't know if you noticed but there's this show now on Channel Four called um, like the, um, Britain's Best Parents or something. I, okay. I don't I like seen the it. show. I don't I don't like the show because I don't like what it stands for because everyone parents in there you, we we say it like you know parenthood there's no manual for it so yeah. there's no best way like everyone's children are different so you know they they parent differently and they were going through p- different parenting styles and you know they had um, the discipline you know this discipline parenting style it was a black family um and uh you know they were talking about smacking and they do smack but it's for you know the things that are up here you know what i mean yeah. like um and never just out of anger or anything like that and you know i'm not against it um but i don't do it because i don't feel we need to um and people say oh you know what you know what would what would have to happen for that to happen now and i always say if they endanger eat themselves or each other by doing something st- stupid, you know what I mean? You use that as a tool so they just know just never, ever, ever mm. again. So if Zaire pushed Kida into the road and she almost got run over, that kind of thing. But the thing is as well is is the way you go about it. So I feel mm. like there's the automatic reaction of, okay, instant punishment, whatever's happened. For me... I feel that when you hear the stories of, you know, particularly in black culture, um, of parents sending their child out into the yard to find a stick to be beaten with, like, that's like plotting. That's something else. For for me, <laughs> I feel that, you know, it does, it does take it to a next level. Um, I think that you get situations where, you know, it's not nice to see, but a, a child does something naughty, um, like a toddler or whatever, and the mum says, like, no, don't do that, and gives, like, a smack on the bum, like, over nappy or whatever it is. It's still not, like, great to see. But you can see mm. that that parent's not thought through what they're doing. Something's happened. They've moved. Yeah. But I feel like for me, and again, I say it for me because I won't tell people how to parent because I've not completed the game yet. Um, but when you are planning, when you are sending your child to a spot whilst you go and prepare and then go and administer this like physical punishment that leaves more than a redneck, I feel, yeah, it's counterproductive because then what are you teaching that child mm. for? how they deal with conflict or how they deal with when people have done them wrong or done something wrong as time goes on. Mm. I mean, I got, I got smacked as a, you know, as a, as a child, um, not a lot. Um, uh, And it's simply because it was for really bad, but so I'll just be real. You know what I mean? I got caught stealing, um, um, you know, when I was like 10 or something, nine, not even like, say we couldn't afford what I was stealing it was so dumb um but I got smacked for it and I feel like I that was a you know for what I did like yeah you know mm-hmm. what I mean like I I got caught teeth in like I, I embarrassed my parents I am you know make it look like that I can't afford you know what I was stealing mm-hmm. um which was like something silly like I can't remember bounce ball some stuff some next big and then it was a few things it was just like it was a silliness um and and then i think I, I got smacked for something else but they were really they were bad things that i did you know what i mean it wasn't yeah. like oh you know you dropped a plate it smashed bam you know what i mean it wasn't nothing like that so 
Um, and I, and that's why I feel like that you know, if if what if one of them got um, caught stealing um, stealing or was stealing money from the wallet or something you know something like that, what would my reaction be? You know what I mean? And yeah, with me it was a just a time I remember was me being extremely rude to my mum and like calling her a name wasn't a swear word but i called her something not nice and then i tried to leave the room now before i could get the room oh. before i could get out before i could get to the door that's when and but it's that thing where the second that she did it i knew why that's yeah. why i was trying to get out of the room because i knew that i stood over a line and i don't think mom ever ever did anything like that to me afterwards because I, I knew where the line was exactly exactly Exactly. So yeah, it's 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 hard. It's hard, and I I just guess sometimes as well as it can be really. They as parents, you can always be put in a spot. Um, even when you're just working with young people, they're really good at de-skilling you, and they're really good at pushing your buttons, and they're really good at trying to find a way to make you act irrationally. Mm-hmm. And I think yeah, that's that's a, that's a big kind of thing that I think um, a question is being asked is like you know what what do you think you're teaching your child by hitting them but at the same time how many people f- <laughs> how many people is it a reaction without thought but yeah I don't want to um, mm. I don't want to spend too much time worrying about um, about hitting um, it would be good to have that discussion with people on another day uh, when we've got a bit more time mm-hmm. uh, Kitty we have recently uh, been added to well been added to a group um, Joe was talking to us about it a little while back and I'm hoping to be able to do a bit of collaboration with a few people. Um, I was talking to a lady today who I'm going to have to quickly check what her page was called, but um, she's a puppeteer. And so one of the things that she yeah. does is, yeah, is um, like trying to think what style, not like the Muppets, but you know, like little characters, um, Little Crown Story House is called. And so, yeah, I'll be sharing some of their stuff as time goes on because she does, like, they do, like, live sessions or play sessions and for people to tune in with little ones and they can just watch it on, on their screen. And it's black-owned, which I thought was really nice. It's not something you really see. Um, so I just thought, yeah, there's a few things that would be nice to reach out to. There was also a guy who does gaming events in Birmingham. Um, and he okay. he did one in March. I think it was March just for like, the lockdown. But it'd be good to try and do some stuff. Uh, with them because i feel like there is you know we've got like our crafting but as we know as the kids get older you will get something into crafting but there are some that are more into gaming is there a way for us to find a way to do like a father child play session in a controlled environment with the electronics because you get a lot of nowadays your 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 fortnights and things like that that kids will sit in their room and play for hours and hours and hours with their mate but you know there are games that you can play as a family. Even people who aren't adept gamers or massive gamers, there will be games for the family to play. So I'm wondering, there's there's ideas out there that would be good to kind of get people out there into. So yeah, see see a few collaborations coming up. Um, I am still missing being in the BCFM studio. Definitely. It's just, yeah, sitting at my desk with just a keyboard and a mouse. I want like my, my mixer <laughs> and my fader and air conditioning would uh-huh. be nice. And not having children, yeah. like four feet away from me listening on my conversation <laughs> that'd be really nice too uh, well um I, I also want to give a shout out um you know um to a lady called francesca uh, who's the owner of um uh, seska bakes um got in, recently got in touch with us um she owns a business a baking business in cleveland and she recently reached out to us in terms of wanting to you know work with us um because we obviously we give fathers a platform to um you know share their experiences about um, you know their children and fatherhood, parenthood, uh, and you know she likes that, and she is doing some um, bake, uh, you know bake sales um, for cakes and biscuits and stuff, um, where the donations will be coming over to um, Dad Cast with the Man um, for our um, future projects, um, namely obviously that you know Dad Craft and other events that we you know we're going to be putting on. So. Um, I want to give a shout out to um, Seska Bakes. Make sure you check them out. That's at Seska Bakes. Uh, and yeah, get involved. Um, see what they're about. Um, I'm sure you'll find out more about them, you know, as we go on, as we'll, you know, put on our socials. Yeah, so keep an eye on the socials. Um, I do want to make people aware that I believe that um, these orders need to be in before Father's Day. Yep. 
Uh, and then, yeah, so anybody that buys these these baskets, I think it's £20 for the basket. And for every uh, basket sold, £5 will go to Dakas with the Mandem. Um, it's not necessarily... I guess it is a paid promotion, but it's more um, Fran donating her, her time to try and help a cause. She was trying to find a cause that helped out dads. Uh, she's, she named single dads as a group that she wants to help out. So, yeah, shout out to her for, for doing that work. Um, Skins, I'm going to I'm gonna wrap up the show now. Um, it feels a bit... But we're just the two of us. I've had a bit of enough of talking to you, if I'm honest. Um, you're not <laughs> giving me anything. Nah, joking, joking. Um, but no, it's been it's been a really weird week. If if just looking at the world, it's been a really weird six months. Um, the last week has been filled with loads of ups and downs. There's been loads of conversations with people, and as BCFM will will have broadcasts out all the time, telling you like you know. We're, we're looking to rebuild and try and get back to the new normal. But in the meantime, like, do not be afraid to speak out. Um, I think there are people that are, we're quite lucky living in the households that we live in, being from, you know, diverse backgrounds, friendship groups and all that kind of stuff. We've got so many people around us with different views. We're quite well-rounded. There are some people that are not fortunate enough to be as well-rounded or as well-educated. And unfortunately, the only voices they have to go by are the ignorant ones that they had growing up and in the communities that are in. They're kind of stuck in their ways and we need to help them by having these conversations. And I just kind of want to encourage people, you know, there were people that were really unhappy about the, the um, I don't know what to really call it, the bringing down of Edward Colston's statue. But it was not an absolute riot. And I think people wanted it to be that. And I think that people wanted the groups to do something heinous. People are arguing over a statue of a person that shouldn't be celebrated, in my opinion. And I think that we should be able to have those conversations with people and let them know, you know, this is why I don't appreciate that person. Can you hand on heart tell me that you appreciate that person and let me know, like, why? You know, people are arguing that it's about he he funded a lot of the, uh, funded a lot of Bristol, generated a lot of income, da, 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 but like on the back of what? Why are you really? And yeah, I just, I just want people to kind of have open conversations and um, just, just ensure that we're all trying to help each other level up. I don't want to. I don't want it to be a thing where people are, are bringing people down. But yeah, just yeah. I don't really know how to say it, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah just make sure everybody's looking after each other and themselves. We will be back next week with Joe. Um, sorry, it's been such a such a short one, but if you listen on BCFM. Um, the Bristol medley has been a hot one this week uh, just make people aware that when we record during this lockdown we are recording the week before it goes out on BCFM and then the shows will be up on podcasts where can people find our podcast Ken? so you can find us on iTunes you can find us on Spotify you can find us on most other podcasting platforms you can also find us on Podbean as well okay so there's nothing else to say except for fatherhood doesn't come with a manual see you guys later